this is the story. Um, the story is an interesting one, isn't it? It is. It's a story that um, talks about leadership and succession. And it's an interesting story because we've been here before. And in the succession conversation, it's a very tricky emotional conversation when it comes to politics. Uh, the MPP, for the MPP, Akufado is exiting. And how many months has he done his prayer? Well, in March. He was sworn in on January 7th. So uh, two months and a little, we're in April, sorry. He was sworn in on January 7th. So today is what, 6th? Today is 6th April. So tomorrow is actually what, uh, February, March, April. T tomorrow is three months uh, since Akufado got sworn in for his second term. Within these three months, there's been a lot of constellations on who takes over from him, etc., etc. But for the MPP, it's deja vu because they are back at the same place. In 2005, after J. Kofor had been sworn in, there were constellations about who gets in, who's going to replace J. Kofor because Akufado was a frontliner in that matter. You remember uh, in 1998, he had challenged J. Kofor to the ticket, and, um, and therefore people thought that he was a frontliner. But then other people emerged, Kofi Kunado Apreku, Al Haji Ali Muhammad, the incumbent vice president, who had been a vice president for two terms, was, was kind of poll ready. And the Al Haji Ali Muhammad thing destroyed a lot of relationships, you know, between Haruna Atta, who was one of Akufado's pals, and Akufado himself. And Haruna Atta was very pained by the situation. He left the MPP. He joined the NDC. Well, he didn't quite join the NDC, but he was appointed as ambassador by John Mahama. All of us still love al Haji Haruna Atta, but it was devastating to see that this contest has divided friends. In the MPP, there was a lot of Toss and battle here and there. Aliu Mahama, may he rest in peace, a, a legendary former vice president. He lost some of the, some relationships. I remember other people were involved. They all lost relationships. It was a very major issue. The issue of why should it be this and not that. In the heat of all of these things, the late Victor Newman, unfortunately he passed recently, who was an ardent Akufuado supporter, wrote a letter to the foreign minister as Akufuado was then was, and said to him that, look, chief, you're wasting time. You are the heir apparent to this thing. Everybody knows that you come after Kufour and see what is happening. People are campaigning. You are not campaigning. You are sitting out traveling and doing foreign minister work. By the time you finish, you've lost the battle and you will not be the MPP's flag bearer. This Victor Newman, a very angry Victor Newman, wrote to Akufado in 2005 and said, chief, if you don't take care and watch something here, you will see what will happen. Be, by the time you come, people have taken over the thing. Everybody is campaigning. You are sitting down doing foreign minister. That was Newman. Now let's hear what Akufado said in response to Newman. I believe that the wisdom that he expressed in those days is relevant today because today it has started. The MPP, you know, some people didn't get ministerial positions because they said that they were started campaigning. And, and recently the party issued a communique and said people should stop campaigning. It's all over the place. This is what Akufado said. So Newman wrote to him. Let's look at page one. He says, uh, and I titled it MPP's Leadership Contest, Wisdom from Akufado's Leaves. And uh, I, I picked the title from Lord Denning, who wrote a book entitled uh, Leaves from My Library. Uh, it's a very beautiful book that many law students have read. It's by Lord Denning, the famous British judge. He wrote a book entitled Leaves from My Library. And that's where I picked this one from Wisdom from Akufado's Leaves. He said, I was not at home. Uh, when my old newspaper, our beloved statesman, carried an article by you urging me to make my voice heard on the issues of the next presidential candidate of our great party, the New Patriotic Party. Much of it hinged on the need to boost morale of our supporters at a difficult moment for the party and its government. It was a very public call, hence my response to this open letter. Let's go to the next page. It says, it is common ground that our government is experiencing its first serious political squall since we won the historic elections of the year 2000, some five years ago. It began early in the second term with the decision of the president, with the full support of his entire cabinet, to order a 50% increase in the prices of petroleum products. Now, this happened in 2005 when John Ajekum Kufo's government increased petroleum prices by a whooping 50%. I think it's the biggest increase that we've ever had. And there was, people thought that it was an abuse of the goodwill. People thought they won the election, so they are doing what they like. It was a difficult time for the MPP, and already the opposition against the MPP was beginning to build up. And Akufado is addressing these matters to Victor Newman, that this is not the time for us to start politicking after who comes after Kufo. Uh, politicking about who comes after Kufo. Let's see what else he said. 
He said, none of us were under any illusions about the difficulties that this decision would entail for the lives of our ordinary people and also for our own political fortunes. We felt then and still feel that the decision was a necessity in the national interest, even if painful. We will abdicate the responsibility of government if the only aim of our policy was constant popularity. The most important test of popularity takes place in December 2008, three and a half years away, when the Ghanaian people give the verdict on the whole of the record of our second term, not on a particular item or face of it. Our difficulties have been extended by the campaign of baseless allegations leveled against the integrity of the president over the hotel purchased by his son, which is part of a clearly orchestrated chorus of corruption that the opposition is using as its main tool to undermine the government. Our ship appears to be passing through stormy waters. Well, those of you who don't know the story, now Kufado is referring to famous purchase of a hotel by President Kufo's son. His name is Chief Kufo. The hotel now doing very well as Africa Regent, of which we are all proud. At that time, the hotel had been purchased by Chief, who was a chartered accountant. He was working for Pricewaterhouse. He worked for them all over the world. He was leading Pricewaterhouse in Ghana. He was not a member of government. He resigned from Pricewaterhouse and set up a consultancy and acquired a hotel from a private man without government funding. He raised his money from a bank and bought a hotel, and bought a property from a private Lebanese man, and he decided to convert it to a hotel. That became a big political issue. The president's son is corrupt. That, 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 all, I mean, all of the corruption we heard about Chief Kufo's hotel. Up till now, 2021, not an iota of evidence has been provided. NDC's government has come eight years. Nothing, absolutely nothing was heard of it. But it was a propaganda that sort of sat, sat with quite a few people. And people were concerned that this is a Bile Ahe hotel. You know, as they say, the, all of that. Is, you know, Wakoto hotel. It's, you know, all the hotel issues were on. And the propaganda was big time. It was brutal. Remember, Kwesi Pratt's was, was prevented from, by policemen from taking a photograph of the hotel. No, actually, a journalist was prevented by a policeman from taking a photograph of the hotel. Kwesi Pratt did a one-man match to the hotel to take a photograph. <laughs> Those of you who don't know the story, that's what that was a reporter in those days. So I, I reported on it. Okay. So that so Akufa is referring to that matter, you know, about the allegations of the son's purchase of the hotel. Let's see what else he says. These are the times in which he's writing this to Victor Newman, by the way. He says the duty of those of us on board in these circumstances is clear. We all have to rally around the captain and assist him to steer the ship to the shore. Unity, discipline, and loyalty have to be our watchwords if we are not all to go down with the ship. It is time for all hands on deck so that we can steady the ship and bring it home safely to the port. I have not changed the view that I expressed at my vetting early this year. The most effective foundation for a successful tilt at the presidency by an MPP candidate in 2008 will be the good performance of the Kufo government between now and then. If the government delivers on its promise of improving the social and economic conditions of the mass of our people, which it can, the work of the candidate will be considered light, considerably lighter. I dare say that if Jerry Rawlings had left a positive legacy to defend fee females, a contemporary of mine from Legon Hall, he would probably be president of the republic today. That then is where I want to put my energies for now, helping build a Kofo legacy for 2008. It should be the aim of all of us. Okay, it goes on. I am aware of the sheer anxiety of many in the party about the secession issue in 2008. Indeed, I know that in certain party circles, it has become an obsession, one which it is now clear the party needs to manage if it is not to undermine the cohesion of our effort at our main tax, ensuring the success of the government under the leadership of J.A. Kufo. This is also very instructive. Akufado talks about how he's seen that, you know, the party contest has become an obsession. And he's advising that this needs to be managed. This is, he's writing in 2005 about 2008. That if this is not managed, there'll be problems. Okay. He says, I am sure, the very, I'm sure that very soon the party will define the guidelines of the competition for the future leadership, and I will act within them, as I trust the others will do. This is the first time in the history of our noble tradition that we are confronted with the problem of organizing in power an orderly succession to our leadership, and thus to the leadership of the nation, and we need to get it right. I am fortified by three things. 
Okay, let's look at the three things. Firstly, it has become obvious that the MPP project, the development of our society in freedom, is the only project in town. There is no credible alternative. The prospect of a return of a Rawlings, controlled NDC to power, does not appeal to the broad masses of our people. And, God willing, it will not happen. Okay. Secondly, the president and his government continue to be fully focused on the goal of national transformation, which we promised the Ghanaian people we would achieve. Self-serving attacks from political quarters that have lost all credibility will not divert us. Okay, thirdly, the MPP spirit is, much, is very much abroad and alive, despite the disappointments that several faithful, hard-working party activists like you have suffered since we came to power, the concern across the length and breadth of the party for the health of the MPP project remains very deep. This is a source of great strength for our movement. Okay, we need to harness the commitment, dedication, and energy of scores and hundreds and thousands of genuine party workers so that with hard work and strong showing of the Kufo government, we shall score. God willing, a hat trick of victories in December 2008 to allow us the opportunity to continue with the building of our project in order to bring prosperity, freedom, and dignity to the lives of our people. Yeah, okay. That's the thesis of Akufuado. And I, I titled it Leaves, Wisdom from Akufuado's Leaves. So this is the MPP story. Now, this is not the first time we're going, this is not the first thing we're going to do on the MPP story. We're going to do a few, a few more things. I told you this is shorter than the Jomahama, so let's deal with it, isn't it? Okay, so now, uh, that's Akufuado's story. It's done. It's finished. This is what he wrote in 2005, 15 years ago. Forgive me, in the post that we said 25 years ago, uh, that's an error. It's 15 years ago, actually. Uh, 15 years ago, this is what happened. This is what he wrote. It's still relevant now. At that time, the MPP ship was shaky, you know? Could we say the same of now? Maybe. Once there's a succession issue, it's going, to be, it's going to be like that. Anytime there's a succession, the Ivory Coast, they couldn't manage a succession of Ofe Boigny. They went to civil war to settle the matter. It's a very serious matter. In Ghana, we will never go to civil war, God willing. But the Ivory Coast went to civil war to settle the matter. You remember Congo, Zaire, what is now Congo DR, after Mobutu Seseseku, they couldn't manage a succession to settle the matter. They went to civil war. The Arab Spring tore the succession of Hosni Mubarak apart. The Egyptian leader, Hosni Mubarak, the, the Arab Spring tore his succession apart. Colonel Gaddafi, he died. He was killed. Succession is a very major issue. After eight-year term and the leader is no longer available to go, the succession of the CPP was torn apart. But then I left the country, etc., etc. So succession is a very dangerous situation. And the MPP is going to fight it again. Fortunately for them, they fought it before. And they know the consequence of it. In 2008, when the polls came out, and I interviewed Jay Kufo in the film that you have seen, and he talked about it, there were 27 independent candidates as a result of this issue. The Kufado people, this people, that people, that people, 27 independent candidates. It is widely believed that if they didn't have 27 independent candidates, they would have won the parliament. If the MPP had won, and the NDC won the parliament by two, 2008, two, single two. NDC won the parliament by two. That's... That's what it was. In the 2009 results, January 2009 results by two. Professor Mills needed a, a single constituency was dividing the two candidates. And Professor Mills needed to win a single constituency in time to become president. Akufado had defeated him in the first round. Everything pointed to the fact that the MPP was a stronger party at the poll in 2008. The data is clear. People can disagree with that, but the data is clear. The MPP was a stronger party, a party looking for a third term, taking a 100,000 lead over the opposition. Is the MPP was a stronger party. There's no doubt about that. And so this process was not well managed. If this process had been better managed, the MPP may have won the 2008 election. The NDC also have the problems with succession. After Professor Mills died, John Muhammad took over. We, we're going to discuss that. Okay, so this is it. Now, the Congress came. 17 candidates presented themselves at the Congress. The Congress came. Akufuado won it, but he couldn't win the first round of the Congress. And then there was a second round. The, the candidates who came second, Alan Shamatin, the Honorable Trade Minister, decided, decided with very good faith, and that's why a lot of MPP people remember Alan for that. He decided that he didn't need another round of voting. For us reporters, we had been there from morning, Saturday morning, and the results were given Sunday morning, 7 o'clock. So we had been there from Saturday morning. Kufo spoke, Odoisa voting started about 3 o'clock. 
Voting ended at 7 o'clock in the morning at the University of Ghana. And at 7 o'clock, the Electoral Commissioner said that we had gone into a second round between the first candidate, Nana Akufuado, and the second candidate, Alan Chiamatin. Alan Chiamatin said, I'm not interested. Akufuado goes. Let's hear the sum of the speech that Akufuado gave that night, that morning, that Sunday morning. Here is Akufuado speaking. You have decided to confer the mandate on my mother's person. I am grateful to you and want to let you know that I'll do everything in my power not to let you down so that the decision you have made here will bear fruit for us next year. I hope my colleagues will forgive me if on this occasion I single out one particular one. The young man who gave me such a big run for my money. <laughs> and who has shown in this his first intervention in our national politics that the talent, the drive, the energy are all there. All I can say to him is what my predecessor's flag bearer said to me many years ago, and I've never forgotten it. <laughs> After our contest in 1998, he came to my house to tell me that he has to be president first before I become president. <laughs>